After offering the joint development and production of Su-75 to India at the Aero India 2023, Russia has now started flight tests of a new version of the Su-57 which has received 6th generation engine with a flat nozzle with a variable thrust vector. 90% of the flat nozzle parts have been made by additive technologies, which allows the hot exhaust gases to mix more evenly with the cooler surrounding air, thus reducing the infrared signature and detectability by enemy sensors, and also improves the maneuverability of the aircraft. Russia United Engine Corporation has said that it also features high-performance bearings, ceramic turbine elements, advanced electrical systems, and a three-circuit engine, which will allow 12.5% improvement in subsonic fuel efficiency. France is now seen as the prime contender in the high-thrust jet engine development program, as Safran has offered a co-development initiative for a new engine core that will be larger than the M88 engine, that will be capable of generating 75 kN of dry thrust and 120 kN of wet thrust. Interestingly, the proposed 120 kN engine not only holds potential for the AMCA program, but is also compatible with the existing 36 Rafale fighter jets of the Indian Air Force, and this compatibility provides the Indian Air Force with the option to replace the current M88 engine with the new high-thrust engine. Safran has informed the DRDO and AMCA team that a prototype of the new engine will be ready in 2028 for initial trials, and it will start testing on board a Rafale flying testbed from 2030. There are indications that India is considering equipping its TED BF with the proposed Safran 120 kN engine, that could potentially lead to a production order in larger quantities. Israel has announced that it is planning to buy 25 F-35 fighter jets from the US government in a deal worth $3 billion, and Lockheed Martin and engine manufacturer Pratt & Whitney have both agreed to involve Israeli defense industries in the production of aircraft components. This development has instantly started a new gossip in India, that instead of buying 31 MQ-9B drones at a similar price, India should have ordered one squadron of 25 F-35 at the same price. China has already built over 150 J-20 fighter jets, and it has now started flying with two new WS-15 afterburning turbofan engines, that will improve the flight performance and supercruise ability. Against a no-time warning for 985 kilometers, India has conducted a test of the K-15 submarine-launched ballistic missile at 6.50 pm last evening, however, the DRDO has not confirmed the testing of the missile even after 24 hours. The first SSPNINS Arihant is currently undergoing a major refit at Cochin port, so there is a chance that it might have been tested from the second SSPNINS Arigat which is currently undergoing sea trials. The RDO's gas turbine research establishment has embarked on an ambitious project to design and develop a new variant of the Manic engine for the air-launched cruise missile program. The project aims to equip the air-launched cruise missile with a lower 3.3 kN engine variant, that will allow it to achieve a range of over 500 km. The DRDO has also taken on the responsibility of developing subsystems and line replacement units for the air-launched cruise missile, and work is underway to create a strong and self-reliant supply chain with the public and private sector industries. The Indian Navy is working with the Aeronautical Development Establishment to finalize the configuration of the High Altitude Long Endurance Class UAV as well as establishing the fundamental parameters, such as endurance of over 35 hours and a maximum takeoff weight of nearly 5 tons. The Army and Air Force will also recommend specific sensors and payloads based on their operational requirements. The Navy is actively working towards securing a 20-30% transfer of technology in the MQ-9B deal, which will play a crucial role in the development of the indigenous hail class UAV. Oh, my God.
Attention. 